is that there's an existing Linux system. It also sees multiple hard drives. So we have some options here. We can use entire drive, we can replace the existing system, we can use free space. There is no free space on the first drive, so that would not be an option. The second drive, SDB, has free space, which could be used. SDC also has space. But since we intend to upgrade, what we should do is use the Replace Existing Linux System option. That's the upgrade option. And now it specifies here that the partitioning options will now be written to the disk. In this case, it's going to replace the existing system. If you go back, you'll see the options. This is your opportunity to make changes. And we'll cycle through again, write changes to the disk. And notice that it's going through the stages of creating ext4 file systems on the file systems that were in place that were ext3. Again, existing files will not benefit from this extension. And this is progressing nicely. because it's across the wire at gigabit speed the packages should be copied rather quickly so it's just a matter of waiting for this to run to install all 219 packages and during installation as you've come to expect there are a number of consoles available Control Alt F1 is where the text based installation takes place. Control Alt F2 is a shell that may be used. You can interact with it at any time, and you'll see whatever partitions that have been allocated thus far, such as home, for example, etc. Notice it's used logical volume management. You name, you name A, 2632 is the kernel that's being used. And that's on Control Alt F2, so Control Alt F1, installer, which is already at halfway. Two, console that you may use, which has remounted in our environment in a way so it can place the files that are necessary to the drive. Control Alt F3 shows us logging information. additional logging information control alt f4 this is specific to the hard drives f5 shows us step by step what's happened with the various drives and file systems f6 is blank and f7 ditto since we're not using graphical so f1 brings us or returns us to the installation So there are a number of new changes to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6, including, for example, the fact that the graphical interface is no longer on Control-Alt-F7. It's now on Control-Alt-F1 as the primary interface, which is a hint that the graphical interface is to be used as the default interface, whether server or desktop implementation. And we see it installing the SC Linux targeted policy package. Enhancements to SC Linux have been made as well to cover more services, including SSH, for example.
Notice the log levels, info for the steps that have taken place. Network manager, updated sysconfig network scripts, if config ETH0. And now we're on the final package. Notice during this text space installation, we were not prompted to select package categories. Assumptions were made by Anaconda and have been carried out as a consequence. That's the default behavior, by the way. navigate to F3. Preparing to install packages was the last message. SC Linux rules. Number of rules, almost 200,000 rules have been uh, applied. Grub was run to update the bootloader. And now the system has been finished. So if we reboot this will take us through the cycle again. Of course, since the CD is in, it'll boot, unless we eject it. Since the final or last option is to boot from the local hard drive, we can allow the CD to boot and then select boot from the local hard drive, which will then render boot control to the primary hard drive specified in the system BIOS that's responsible for booting a system. Either way, to play it safe, if you are performing this installation remotely, you should remove the CD at this stage, or have someone remove it, so that the system boots to the appropriate option, since you're not able to change the grub boot menu on the CD, since it's read-only. And here's that boot menu again, so let's boot from the local hard drive. And there's the 2632 kernel. And we'll let it go through and boot. Pressing escape will show you the different services as they are initiated. and our system's up. So we've performed the installation. We can log in. We didn't configure the graphical environment. Run level is 3 as a consequence. Uptime is less than a minute. DF indicates the current layout, which means it reflects what we've discussed, which also means it's a result of logical volume management, which is why it's able to achieve the 50 gigs. So from the storage that's made available, it was able to allocate the appropriate storage. So that is one way to perform a new installation of Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 6 using HTTP sources served by Apache and a boot CD-ROM with some boot options across the wire.